Well, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We're thankful to God that God has afforded us the opportunity to come on this Wednesday night for our virtual Bible study here at the Friendship Baptist Church of Delaware, where our motto is, we're not a popular church, we are a powerful church. Powerful through the word, the worship, and the discipleship. For they will not come, they must be brought. Do us a favor tonight, tag a family member, tag a co-worker, tag uh, anyone that you can and let them know, amen, that it is now Bible time. It is now time uh, that we share uh, in the word of the Lord tonight. And we're so thankful that you have tuned in to worship with us on tonight. Uh, in a way of announcement, uh, we want to invite you, amen, this coming Sunday, uh, which is fourth Sunday, is normally our men's Sunday, uh, but this Sunday is our youth Sunday, and we're coming, amen, and you are going to uh, lead us in worship. Uh, they're going to preside. They're going to do, they're going to do their thing, and we want you to come and to worship with us, amen. Come, amen. Don't come alone. Bring your family, your friends, your co-workers, amen, and allow them and you can experience a worship and a word that will change your life. Tonight, we're praying for our sick. We're praying for our shut-in. We're praying for those who are going through a grief moment, uh, maybe losing a loved one, uh, that we know that this season, while we're in the 24th day of the new year, amen, death is still uh, taking loved ones, and we want you to know that we're praying for you that God will bring you out, that God will deliver you, that God will see you through this season because he said, weeping may endure for a night, but certainly joy will come in the morning. Tonight, we're praying, amen, for our mothers. We're praying for the absent part of friendship. You that have a heart and desire to come and to be in fellowship, Amen. But because of health challenges or whatever challenges you may be facing, uh, you cannot come and worship with us uh, in person. But we want you to know. We want you to know that we love you, Amen. And we're praying uh, continuously, Amen, that God will strengthen your body tonight. We thank God for our Deacon Warren Henderson. I thank God for our Deacon Owens. Uh, Dr. Cheryl, our trustees, mother, everyone that makes up the great church called Friendship. We honor every one of you in your respectable places. Let's pray tonight, Father. Before we ask you for anything, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you for the good. Thank you for the bad. Thank you for the times, God, when we felt like you were not listening, that you were not uh, catering to our needs or even our desire. But I pray, Father, tonight, thank you for the moments that we, when we when we had times that we felt like you were not there, but you said, Lord, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the earth. I pray, Father, tonight for those who are going through a period of moments of depression, moments of feeling not, not like themselves, those who tonight, tonight, Father, are going, experiencing some financial challenges. They're having challenges on their job, challenges in their home. They're having challenges all the way around. But I pray, Father, that you would break it and destroy it tonight. I pray, Father, tonight, those who are experiencing pain and sickness, that you would touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet tonight. I pray, Father, tonight that even those who are watching the live, watching the replay, that I pray, Father, tonight that whatever they stand in need of tonight, that, Father, you do it as only you can do it. And, Father, we give your name glory tonight. Break up the follow ground. Break up the ground of depression. Break up the ground of fear and, and failure. Break up the ground that you're not going to do it. But I pray, Father, tonight, give us the boldness to understand that you are a God that knows all and sees all. And you're coming to meet our needs. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus tonight. We thank you and we praise you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Put it in the comment tonight and somebody say, amen, amen. We're going right to the word of the Lord tonight. Haggai chapter number one. We are in a series and I believe that this this new year, amen, we're starting a new year off, right? Because I believe how you start is how you finish. And the Lord challenged us, amen, for 2024. I mean, out of out of Haggai chapter number one, um, that we're asking God to revive us again. Revive us again. And we have been uh, we have been teaching, amen on this Haggai chapter number one and we hope that you have are getting something out of the lessons that is being presented on Wednesday nights amen uh, and so here it is our lesson tonight comes out of Haggai chapter one um, and we're coming out of verse uh, number um 13 through we're going from 12 verses 12 through 15 and 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 as we, a backdrop of what we talked about last week last week if you did not uh have a chance to watch the live uh, go back and watch it uh, but last week we came and we talked about think about it and uh you have to remember um, here it is in Haggai chapter one. Uh, it is in chapter one that we are introduced to that God is, re is, ha is rebuking the returning or the return of the remnant uh, of the remnant of those misplaced priorities. Uh, that when you understand that their priorities were in the wrong place, uh, they were they were they were doing things, but. They were they were not honoring God the way that they should, and and because of that, and uh, uh, they began to have excuses on why they were not rebuilding the temple. They were they were doing everything else. They were building. They were busy doing everything else, but they were not uh, focused on rebuilding the temple, and and so because they. They did not want to, uh, they were scattered in their mind and scattered doing things. And here it is. We ourselves, we will find ourselves making an excuse why we can't do things for the temple or why we can't do things to, uh, for God because we got, uh, our children got soccer practice. Our children has this, our children have that. Um, but we have to make sure that our priorities are in the right place. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm not saying forsake your family. I'm not saying forsake your children. Uh, but you must understand uh, you have time that you have time for family and you're going to have time to do things. And you must make sure you have time for God. Uh, they were not even worried about building God and building God's house. Uh, even worried about their house and because they were making excuses on why they could not rebuild. And then not only that, in verses three and four, Haggai exposes their wrong priority. Uh, that it, uh, they they dwelt in wonderful houses while the whole while the while the house of the Lord lied and laid in ruin. It was uh, as I said last week uh, that you 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 ever been on the block and the block is beautiful there, but there's one house that just like as an eyesore, and that's just how the temple looked. The temple was an eyesore because everything around it was beautiful, but the temple well, was lying in ruin. And what happens is sometimes uh, we get so busy with the wrong priorities that we don't put them. But I want us to do in 2024, I want us to put our priorities in the right place. And not only that, um, in verse six, as we talked five and six last, we talked last week, 
We have to consider our ways, consider the thought. And he says, now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You, you so much, but you bought in little. You eat, but you you have not enough. You drink, but you have not been filled to drink. You clothe yourself, but you're not. Uh, no, not one is warm. You 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 have he, uh, he who earns wages. In other words, you're getting paid, but you don't even have money because he's putting holes in the bags. He's putting holes in your bag. So we have to make sure. Because here it is, because we are not doing what God has called us to do, God will cause things to come upon us and make us understand because we're not doing what God has called us to do or our priorities are in the wrong place. God will blow on what he's given to you. You're making, you're working, but you don't have the money. Uh, you, you, you're eating, but you ain't full. You, you're drinking, but you ain't you ain't feel. Uh, and, and so here it is. You and I, brothers and sisters, we should never forget what God has said for us to do. Let us make sure that our priorities are in the right place. Verse 7, verse 7 and 11 talks about rebuilding the temple uh, because here it is after God, after God uh, blow holes in their bags and does, and he, he exposes their, their, their priorities that are in the wrong place. He tells them, now you must do this. You got to consider your ways, go up into the mountain and bring wood and build the temple. Uh, who's supposed to build the temple? We are supposed to build the temple. That that here it is. That I may take pleasure in it and be glorified. It's not for us to take glory in it. It's for it's for Him to take pleasure in it and be glorified. Save the Lord. You look for much, but indeed it came little. But because of my house that is in ruin, while everyone of you run to his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you will uh, withhold the dew. In other words, because we're not doing what God has called us to do, he's going to withhold the things or the necessary things that we need. That he's going to hold the dew. He's going to hold, he's going to blow on our pocket. He's going to do this, that, and the other. And that's why we must understand, brothers and sisters, that we, this season, is that we make sure that our priorities are in the right place. Let's get to verse 12. Let's get to verse 12. Verse 12 is the response. Here it is. The backdrop of this is that uh, the response to Haggai's prophecy, that verse 12, that they obeyed God and feared his presence. Here it is, uh, uh, Zerubbabel. And Joshua, the uh, 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 with all the remnant of of the people, obey the voice of the Lord. Here it is, brothers and sisters. Obedience has to begin with leadership. I didn't say it. This is what the Bible says. Obedience has to begin with leadership. Uh, here it is, is that in order for you to be a good leader, you must become, first become a good follower. Here it is. Obedience is better than a sacrifice. Here it is. Obedience has to begin with leadership. One thing about it is, is that we must understand as we serve and be in leadership, we too must understand we have to be obedient. We cannot ask people to be to to be obedient to the voice of God through the man of God if you're not willing to be obedient yourself. How can you as some so we, we have to be careful uh, because 
If we're not obedient in this leadership, leadership is not just pastor. It's not just deacon. It's not the, it's leader. Whatever God has called you to, if you are not obedient with what God has said and what God is speaking, then here it is. If you're not willing to be obedient, then there's a problem. Because I know that if I was not obedient to what my mother said, there was there was some there was a beating coming behind it. There that there was if I did not do what my mother told me to do, or if I did not tell, even if you did not do what those who had rule over you, or if you're on a job and your supervisor tell you to do something and you don't do it. Now you're being disobedient. But obedience has to become or begin with the leadership. This was not a sermon just for the people, but also for the highest leaders among God's people. That here it is, that even no matter how high you go, I don't care how many how many letters you get behind your name. I don't care how many letters you get in front of your name. If you don't have obedience, then you're just a disobedient, educated person. But the leaders, obedience has to begin with leadership. But also with the for the highest leaders among God's people. B tonight is the, the voice of the Lord, their, their God and the word of Haggai the prophet. The voice of God was expressed through the words of Haggai. This is the principle of the inspiration of the scriptures in action. God literally speaks but through a man's word. Anytime, let me, let me, let me, let me stop there. Because everybody declaring God's word is not declaring God's word. They're declaring something that they feel like God said, but God ain't said, I ain't said nothing like that. But the voice of God was expressed through the words of Haggai. What did he say? For the, word of the, for the word of God is not distinguished from the words of the prophet as though the prophet had added anything of his own. In other words, when he speaks or when the prophet stands, he's speaking what God says. Haggai was speaking what God told him to say. He was, number one, he was being obedient. And sometime when you are speaking what God has told you to say, you must understand you cannot worry about the faces who might get mad or might get upset. You have a job to do. I know we don't like to see the mailman because the mailman brings us bills every month. But we cannot get mad at the bill. We cannot get mad at the mailman. He's just, he's just doing his job. He's dropping off the mail. And because he's dropping off the mail, he's doing his job. It is now our responsibility to handle and to follow or even to finish or follow what has been given to us. We got to pay our electric bill. If you don't pay your electric bill, you're going to be in the dark. You don't pay your gas bill, you ain't going to be able to. If you don't follow, if you're not obedient to the law or even to what God has said, For the word of God is not distinguished from the words of the prophet as though the prophet had added anything. He did not add anything. It wasn't no foreign word. It wasn't no foreign speech. It wasn't no foreign. They knew, he knew who was speaking. 
in point two, in pointing out both Haggai is distinguishing between the author of the truth and the messenger of the truth. Who, 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 who is the author of the truth? God. Who is the messenger of the truth? God. See, is that the word of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God sent me. Here it is. Here it is tonight. They respect the for Haggai was based on his office as the prophet. But here it is. And his commission that God sent him. In other words, they knew that God sent Haggai. So they 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 respected his word because they knew he stepped in as the he was stepping in his role as prophet, speaking not what 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 he got off YouTube, but he was speaking what God told him to say, and he came not of himself, but he came because God sent him. But here it is. The people fear the presence of the Lord. Who? Their fear of God promoted obedience. This was more this this was more than basic respect. It was recognition that God is a judge who deals with us righteously. Let me say that again. The fear, they feared God. Uh, the fear uh, of God promoted their obedience. They feared God. They caused them, because you got to look at it. They've been through all of this stuff. Holes in the there's no dew. There's no rain. There's there, there's there's no there's there's no rain because uh, God he he held the rain and and he let sun because now their crops are are jacked up. So they feared God, but it promoted their obedience. And I'm trying to tell you tonight. That if you think your mama, your daddy, or those loved ones that raised you, gave you a beating, there's no beating like the beating of God. That this was more than just basic respect. It was the recognition that God, or they recognize that God is a judge who's going to deal with them or even with us righteously. He, he not going he not going to give us he not going to be lenient he going to give it to us just what we deserve and is there anybody tonight that say god i know i have not done what you told me to do but i thank you that you did not give me really what i deserve that when we look in verse 13 to 15 tonight that now God, in verse 12, the people are, the re, we're looking at the response to Haggai's prophecy. That they obeyed God and feared his presence. But now in verse 13 to 15, God responds to his people. Then Haggai of the Lord's messenger spoke the Lord's message, message to his people saying, I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel and the spirit of Joshua, uh, uh, the high priest and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. Wait a minute. 
I am with you, saith the Lord. What is that? God was there to encourage them and to strengthen them for the work. He always, I want to tell you this, brother and sister, God always empowers and encourages us to do what he commands. Let me say that again. God, he always will encourage us. He will strengthen us for the work, empowers and encourages us to do what he has commanded for us to do. I want to tell you tonight, God is with you. God is with us. He said, I am with you. Who is with you? I, I know you got your boo. I know you got this one. I know you got a good uh, support system, but there's nobody like God being with us. He said, I am with you, save the Lord. God was there to encourage them and to strengthen them for the work. He always, God always empowers Encourages us to do what he's command. B, so the Lord stirred up the spirit. Here it is. We long for such a stirring of the spirit among his people today. The stirring here begins with leadership. Who, who, who is, who is the leadership? Zerubbabel and Joshua. Or some might say Josiah. So the Lord stirred up the spirit. He stirred up the spirit, number one, with the leadership. Here it is. It's not going to happen if the leadership is messed up. The body is going to be messed up. Let me help you out with here. Let me help you out with here. What is in the head? You have ears. You have, you have eyes. You have a nose. You have, you have a mouth. That is the head. If the, if the devil if the enemy can stop your ears from hearing, if he can stop your eyes from seeing, if he can stop your, your, from you from smelling, or if he can talk, stop you from talking, then the head is all messed up. But he starts with leadership and he then extends it to the people. All of the rain or the remnant of the people that that, that he stirs up the, that mean that it came on it came on it came on Zerubbabel and Josiah first, and then it went down to the people. Just like when he he says, "I anointed thy hair with oil." That when it, when the oil ran down, it ran into the beard. And it ran down. The oil doesn't run up. It runs down. That's another subject for another day. That it started with the leadership. And then extended to the people. Verse C. They came and worked on the Lord. The house of the Lord. This is where we end tonight. The stirring of the spirit did not come and go. Just as a spiritual experience. Watch this. The stirring of the spirit flourished into a stirring for the work. The stirring of the spirit didn't come and go just as a spiritual experience. You know, like you had a good worship service and then once the service was over, you that was it. No, it was the stirring of the spirit flourished into a place where it started stirring for them to work. And I want to tell you, people of God tonight, 
that God is stirring us. That we're going to get the work done. That after all that you've been through, God is going to work it out for us. And tonight, I want to tell you, there is a stirring getting ready to happen. After all that you have been through, after God has, glory to God, after he has beat us, after he has shown us who he is, He's going to put his spirit in us that we're going to have an encounter. And the encounter is going to help us to work. And I want to tell us people of God tonight, let's get to work. Let's do what God has called us to do. Listen, we love you. And may the blessing of the Lord be upon you is our prayer. We thank you for tuning in every Wednesday night to our Bible class. We hope and pray that this broadcast is a blessing to you and has been a blessing and is a blessing. We want to hear from you. Send in your letter, send in your prayer request. Write to the Friendship Baptist Church, 530 East 4th Street, Wilmington, Delaware. We'll pray for you. We will uh, we will reach out to you. We want to hear from you. We want you to know that uh, you uh, that watch us and are committed to watching us on a weekly basis, we want you to know that we are praying for you, that wherever you may be watching us from, that your life will never, ever be the same. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he shall repent. That whatever he has spoken, he is able to do it. And I want to tell you tonight that no matter what you are going through, there is nothing new under the sun. In other words, God knows all. No matter what you go through or what you have been through, know that God is with you. Listen, I love you. And may the blessing of the Lord be upon you is our prayer. Let me pray for you, Father. I thank you for these, your people tonight. I thank you for the word that you have given us tonight. I pray, Father, tonight that it will go into the hearts and resonate into the minds and do as only you call it to do. I pray, Father, tonight those who have tuned in to this broadcast, they may have stumbled across it, but I pray, Father, the word has found them that brought them, that would deliver them and bring them out of whatever they had been in. Father, I thank you now for these, your people. Bless us and keep us. Keep us and bless us. Father, someone is not saved tonight. Don't let them rest until they come to the full knowledge of who you are. Save their soul. Save their mind. Save them. I even pray, Father, for the drug addict. I even pray now for the, uh, for the prostitute. I even pray now, Father, for those, uh, our youth. I pray now, Father, for those who are in between God. They don't want to serve God. They don't want to come to church. They don't want to do this God thing. Holy Ghost, arrest them now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Tonight, I pray that someone that is not saved be saved tonight. And you're saying, preacher, I need to be saved. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I believe that you died and rose again on the third day. Today, Father, I believe and confess and make you Lord of my life. I ask you, Father, to come into my heart, my mind, and my soul. Today, I become one with you. Today, I confess that I am saved. Save me, Father, and heal me in Jesus' name. If you said that you are saved and welcome to the family of God, the second walk is to get into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. And I want to offer you Friendship Baptist Church where I said in the offset, our motto is we're not a popular church, we're a powerful church. Powerful through the word, the worship, and the discipleship. For they will not come, they must be brought. And I want to tell you, you have a church in and at Friendship Baptist Church. We will love you. 
We will give you nothing but God. We will help cultivate what God has put inside of you. We will help catapult you to the next dimension of God. That where God is, that's where we'll be. Listen, we love you. And may the blessing of the Lord be upon you as our prayer. And remember tonight. Let's do what God has called us to do. Allow the spirit to dwell in us. Listen, I love you. And may the blessing of the Lord be upon you is our prayer.